All right, it's Friday, which means it's time for Cinema Extra. So fans of thrillers can agree the most entertaining movies often leave you feeling a touch disturbed. Yeah, uh. so this week we're taking a look at some new and unsettling films hitting theaters and the streaming world. Our resident movie buff, Emma Jerome, joins us in studio with her picks. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so ordering food delivery a lot, unironically enjoying acapella music, and this first film, this week we are talking about my guilty pleasures. So just released a few weeks ago and leaving theaters soon. If you're going to see a film this weekend, please go see Saltburn. My parents, they've got problems. What kind of, what do you mean problems? I don't think I'll ever go home again. Well, why don't you come home with me? Come to Saltburn. Mr. Quick. Wow. And here he is now. Oh, what beautiful eyes. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, I told you he wasn't a minger. Oh, but darling, you're kind about everyone. You can't be trusted. Australian actor Jacob Elordi is in his bag. Not even a month after playing Elvis Presley and Sofia Coppola's Priscilla, he is back at it again, playing the affluent Felix Catton, who becomes the object of appeal for our leading man, Barry Cogan, playing Oliver Quick. Known for hits like Banshees of Inishirin and Dunkirk, we see the Irishman in a way we have never seen him before, and who knows when we'll see him like that again. One reviewer likened this film to a sexually deranged Downton Abbey and yeah, I can say they're pretty spot on. This is a bona fide slow burn, in my opinion, the correct amount of filthy. Director Emerald Fennell leaves you thinking, what did I just watch and why did I kind of like it? Honestly, <laughs> funny story, Emily and I went to go see this movie together a few weeks back and we showed up way before the screen was even turned on. It was literally black. In hindsight being 2020, we should have taken advantage of that moment a little longer because it was the last bit of peace we would have for the <laughs> ensuing two hours. Emily, what were, I know your thoughts, but tell the world, what I did know. you think? Well, yeah, for the first time in my life, I was early for a movie. I hadn't even started the previews that I was very proud of myself. Um, we did, I think we looked at each other at the end of the movie and we said, what What did we just watch? Like at one point I remember reaching over and we were both grabbing each other like, <laughs> <laughs> like it just, no amount of watching the trailers that they have released for this film will prepare you for what the plot of this film actually is. Fascinating. It's, it is a thriller in every sense of the word, I and, think. And you, like, you liked it, right? I liked it. I liked it a lot. I so. was disturbed, but I also, I liked the film. Yeah, yeah what did I just thing. watch and why did I kind of like it? And now I want to go back and watch it again and look for like little pieces of symbolism and foreshadowing that and like the things you the missed first the first time, time and yeah. take it to the end. I will say, not a kid's movie. Uh, no. Definitely an adult's film. There are some adult subjects and scenes and subject matter, but uh, it is, it's a good one. Rated R movies are rarely for children, but yes. <laughs> I just is. wanted to, I know, I just this wanted to emphasize that here. point. Our if we did not, not make R. that clear, <laughs> the movie is rated R for good reason. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. And you said you want to go back and watch this movie. One movie I watched, but do not want to ever see again. New to streaming and no pleasure in this one. Coming to Netflix today is May, December. Here is a woman with a lot more to her than I remember from the tabloids. What would make a 36-year-old woman have an affair with a seventh grader? People, they like see me as a victim. I wanted it. 20 years after their notorious tabloid romance, a married couple buckle under the pressure when a Hollywood actress meets them to do a film about their past. Starring Natalie Portman, Julian Moore, and Charles Melton, this movie was intriguing and at least started in a digestible way and then just devolved from there. Moore's character loosely based on Mary Kay Letourneau, a, an American school teacher who was sent to prison after she was caught having an affair with her 12-year-old student. May, December, streaming on Netflix right now. It is so hard for me to see actresses that I love so much and that are so good at their craft act in roles where you see them completely completely differently. Julianne Moore was despicable in this. I feel the need to watch Boogie Nights 15 times just to wash my mind <laughs> oh my from what I thought. But it was a good movie to watch. And okay. The reason I'm saying I don't want to watch it again is because I feel like emotionally hung over. I just oh, need like it was a, a one and hug. done for you. I, is I this get one that. of Netflix's movies that it's hoping is going to get some award season buzz? They're starting to roll them out. 
I could see it. It, yeah. do, it does have, well, Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman, which, I mean, those are both award-winning actresses. Yeah. Yeah. You don't just drop those names in something that you don't expect to at least get a little bit of yeah, that, may, that makes sense. All right, last but not least. Yeah, and Natalie Portman does Naughty and Nasty very well, and if you didn't get enough of her in this latest movie, you can send yourself over the edge with Black Swan. Follows Portman's character, a ballerina whose passion for dance rules every aspect of her life, and it follows the twisted rivalry, friendship, amalgam between her and Mila Kunis' character as her character learns how to be dark. In another intoxicating woman, Rosamund Pike has a small but not insignificant role in the movie Saltburn, which we just talked about. But if you want to see her in her full glory, of course, just watch Gone Girl. It's always worth a rewatch. Mm -hmm. The performance earned her an Oscar nom, and it's easy to see why. Based on the book of the same name, the film follows the collateral damage left behind when Pike's character Amy Dunn disappears and her husband, played by Ben Affleck, is the suspect behind it all. Lots of people have seen it. If you haven't, watch it. Don't look up anything because it's awesome, but mm -hmm. just good movies to watch. Two good picks from the vaults and two good new releases. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. uh, did you know it's holiday season? <laughs> oh, we can, there's some uplifting movies out Travis there. Travis says, can we have a Christmas <laughs> movie, please? Hey, it's only December 1st. I need a little bit to ease into uh -huh. the holly jolly. Come find me next week. We'll okay. see what I can do. That sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> have Thanks, a dark, Emma. twisted weekend. There's, there's <laughs> some, some good picks. Some interesting picks for sure.